uh, I guess it's my job to kind of stick my neck out and <coughs> see. I, I, I expect a problem like this might take you ten or fifteen minutes, and since I'm no genius, it might take me ten or fifteen minutes. But I'll give it an old college try. I guess I should have tried it before I came to class, huh? Yeah. And it's uh, one to square two. So, uh, to, to, Sam, did you have a question before I get to start on this? So I look at this and I think, well, we're doing a section on trigonometric substitution, and uh, I really want to make this thing go away, right? So an obvious thing to do might be something like like x equals uh, two sine of u. I have to hope and pray that that's going to collapse this whole thing and make it look nice. But in the meantime, dx is two cosine u du. So, uh, on the top we get two cosine u du. Here we get four sine squared u. Here we get 4 minus 4 sine squared, which is going to be 4 cosine squared. The square root of it will be 2 cosine u. And so the 2's and the cosines cancel, and I'm left with 1 over sine squared u u. Well, sine squared is the, 1 over sine squared is the cosecant. So, this is 1 quarter cosecant squared u u. I'm avoiding dealing with the limits for the time being. But, uh, that sounds like something I should know. <coughs> cosecant Something's the uh, rule of cosecant squared. It's like something that won't be too difficult. Why? Because I know the integral of the secant squared is a tangent, so the cosecant squared has got to be negative the cotangent. Right? So that's negative one quarter of the cotangent of u. Uh, now might be a good time to deal with these uh, limits here. So uh, these are x's, right? So 1 equals 2 sine of u. So sine of u equals 1 half, or u equals sine inverse of a half. 5 over 6. Five or six. All right. 5 over 6. And then, same thing, x is square root 2 equals 2 sine of u. So sine of u equals square root 2. No, that can't work. Over 2. Yeah, over 2. That is just 1 over the square root 2, which is pi over 4. Okay, do I need to keep going, or is that enough? Uh, negative, cotangent. Uh, you have to be brave to do this stuff, you know? I mean, it's a little harder for me in front of 40 students. <coughs> I make a fool of myself, but I know 
I could be brave about this. I've done this for a long time. But, you know, in the privacy of your paper, you have to be brave, too. You have to give it a try. See. And if it doesn't work, I mean, this might not work, right? So you look at, well, why didn't it work? And, you know, what else could I do? I mean, maybe, you know, maybe a integration by parts, you know, I can reduce something or, uh, you know, have to be flexible and creative to do these. Let me just go through this in case anyone's snuck in. Oh, Ed is not here, is he? Okay. Is Ken, Ken Wu here? Kevin? Is Kevin here? It's not me, Ann. Uh, Mark Min. Mark is not here. Kia Hao Yu? Aren't you Kia Hao Bao? No? Oh. My apologies. England. England's not here. And Richie. Richie's not here. And Zimmon. Or Frederick. Not here. Okay. All right. Any other homework questions? Yeah. Now, I did post some. I didn't post uh, 7.4, but I did post 7.2 and 3. Oh, Ed is here now. Yes, Sam. Can you do uh, number 31 on um, 7-4? 7-4. Yeah, yeah. why uh, they make that comment about x greater than 3, do I? I think they should say x greater than or equal to 3. trigonometric substitution. So I'm just going to guess that we want something to make this go away. So if I say uh, x equals 3 sine of u, I'll approve dx equals 3 cosine u to u. This becomes what? So we have the square root of 3 cosine squared u, 3, 9, minus 9, over 3 sine u, times dx, which is 3 cosine u du. Okay, I'll take the 3 out of there, and that'll cancel here. And this is sine squared. Oh, wait a minute. Cosine squared minus 9. Taurus, you're, th you're thinking I should have tried secant? Yeah, x equals to 3 secant u. 
you know, you were probably right. But I'm going to forge forward to the point where I discover that this wasn't the right direction. Just, you know, I, we'll see. Okay, so this is, oh, that'll be, okay, so cosine squared u minus 1 is what? It should be a sine, because x that's, that's negative sine squared, right? But you sum the x equals 3, three sine is sine of u, but you substitution is longer. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, just, your assuming, voice is so soft. I'm you're, not, assu <laughs> you're assuming the x equals 3 sine of u, but when you substitute it, so you change the cosine. Oh, I'm sorry. Correct, sine squared. Okay, thank you. Getting my sines and cosines mixed up. So sine squared minus one, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know. I'm, I'm, sine squared u plus cosine squared u equals one. So sine squared minus one is negative cosine squared. Yeah. You see, you're right. It's not going to work. You can't find the square root of a negative of a quantity squared. That's just not going to work. So, all right, that's fine. Uh, so, your suggestion is to make it three secant, secant of u. Okay, so dx equals 3, right, the derivative of the secant is secant times tangent. tangent. Okay, so now we have <coughs> square root of 9 secant squared minus 9 over 3 secant at u in times 3 secant secant u tangent u du. Okay. So we immediately get to cancel this. Uh, let's take out this 3 here. Secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared? Yeah. Yes. So this is tangent u times tangent u du. So now we're back to <coughs> Okay. Well, that made our job a lot easier, didn't it? Okay, so we could look this up, but um, We know that the tangent, oh, is it tangent squared? I guess tangent plus 1 equals secant squared. No, no. tangent equals secant squared plus 1. So we can, we can go after either one of those, right? Um, I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to look it up. Uh, So tan squared is tangent minus x. Okay. That would be better. A little close. The book says this is just tangent of x minus x. I think that's uh, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay, uh, any any other problems, questions? Okay. I think you didn't finish this. So you have to re-substitute the u. Well, I, I certainly left off the c. Oh, you're right. Thank you, this is u. Oh, so how am I going to fix this? Is that the question? Hmm, okay. Well, x equals 3 secant, which is... 1 over cosine of u, right? So 
cosine of u equals 3 over x. So sine of u equals the square root of 1 minus 3 squared over x squared. So this becomes tangent is sine over the cosine. So the square root of 1 minus 9 over x squared over 3 over x minus, well, u is just <coughs> x over 3 uh, inverse, inverse secant of x over 3. Okay, thank you. Is that, uh, you can simplify this if you want, but um, I'm not going to do that. Everybody happy? Traffic again, huh? Okay, uh, is that it for the homework? That's it for the homework? Okay. Uh, do you have a question, Andrew? Yeah. Um, 7.2, 7.2, which number? 26. 26. Someone, someone repeat what he's saying, because I'm not getting it. 26. 26. Oh, x squared log squared. Okay. All right, so here we have a... Obviously, uh, integration by parts problem. But we have a lot of options. X squared, y squared, x, dx. We have a number of ways to break this up. Uh, I'm pretty sure. You can do it, I think there are at least two different ways you can do this, but uh, this, this kind of strikes me as a problem. This is, this is a thing we don't really know how to integrate. So, if we set f equal log squared of x and g prime equal x squared, f prime is what? x over x and g is x cubed over 3. So this becomes x cubed over 3 log squared of x minus integral. Oh, this x is going to cancel one of these. That's nice. 2 thirds x squared log of x. Well, let me try one more in time. Richie here. Kia how? Oh, did, did I? Well, yeah. Part is not here. Kevin? Kevin? I'm here. Kevin came in. Kenneth Wu came in. Okay, good. All right. Um, I think maybe this is another problem we've done. All right. Let's uh, let's take this separately. So integral x squared log of x, and uh, that strategy works. So let's try again. So f equals log of x, g prime equals x squared, f prime equals 1 over x, g equals x cubed over 3. So this becomes uh, x cubed log of x over 3 minus integral of, oh good, x squared over 3. So this becomes x cubed log of x over 3 minus 
x cubed over 9. And I have to plug that in here. So end up with x cubed over 3 log squared x minus 2 thirds that thing x cubed log of x over 3 minus x cubed over 9 plus the constant. Okay. Now, I wouldn't count on that being the right answer if I did it that way. I would, I would want to sit there and integrate, which is much more straightforward, and see if I end up back here. Uh, but clearly the strategy works. Uh, finding the derivative of this part rather than the other part, uh, we end up simplifying this till eventually we just, we have to do it twice, but we end up with an integral that is pretty easy to deal with. Okay, going once, going twice, yes. Um, can you do number 25 in section 7.3, page 529? Section 7.3? Yeah. 25. <coughs> the tangent squared? Uh, yeah. I don't want to have to do that one, but I can't really sign it and refuse, can I? Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> that was easy. I did. I did these at home. I didn't do seven point four, but integral tangent squared x dx, right? So we know that. Secant squared. Okay, how does that work? <coughs> I always have to write it out. So the tangent is the sine squared over the cosine squared. And the secant is 1 over the cosine squared. So the secant squared. Oh. Minus tangent squared equals. That's not really what I want, is it? Secant squared minus one equals tangent squared. Right? Somebody tell me I'm wrong here, please. All right, let me. I don't know why I'm getting the easy stuff wrong here, but let me try again. 1 over sine squared over cosine squared plus cosine squared over cosine squared equals 1 over cosine squared. So tangent squared plus 1 equals c squared or and squared equals secant squared minus 1. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. So the integral of this is equal to the integral of secant squared x minus 1 dx. And we know what the we know what function has a derivative that's the secant squared. You know that. We know that like the fact of our palm. What is that? What's the integral of the secant squared? What's the derivative of the tangent? It's the secant squared. So this just becomes tangent of x minus this becomes x. Let's see. 
sometimes things that look hard are easy and vice versa. Right. Any other homework? Homework problems? Okay. Um, I have kind of a homework problem of my own. Uh, I, I did a terrible job. I don't know, I was fading. I'm starting to fade now. All this math is hard. But uh, I, I felt like I did a lousy job on this one, so I want to do it again. Because I think the strategy here is really straightforward and easy. This was a worksheet problem. Uh, sine squared x cosine cubed x dx. And what's really important about this is one of these is odd. Let me rephrase that. One or both of them are odd. If they're both even, you have to take a different path. But if they're both odd, this is very easy. Right? What we want to do is we want to get down to just uh, to say sine to the n of x cosine x or sine x cosine to the n x. And then, then the, the, doing the integral is really easy. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can convert two of these cosines to sines using the Pythagorean identity. left with one cosine and you know I'll have to multiply this out with a bunch of sines. So sine squared x cosine x minus sine to the fourth x cosine x dx. Now I'm just going to use the inverse power rule here, right? So this becomes sine cubed x over 3 minus sine to the fourth x and the fifth x over five, right? Uh, this could be any number here, right, if it's odd. And we'd be able to get rid of, you know, just turn it all into, all but one into sines, and then we can do this. Uh, likewise, if this is odd, you have to go the other way, and you have to be careful because the derivative of the cosine is a negative sign. You want to get your signs right. But, OK, that's, that's all I wanted to say about that one. Any, any questions about that? Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we have a fun-filled day. We have a whole new topic. And topic is something called integration by partial fractions. Integration <coughs> by partial fractions. So as we go through this, I want to emphasize there's no new calculus here. This is just algebra, as you will see. Now, uh, the book takes, uh, takes an interesting strategy. They, they say, well, what if I had a fraction? Like uh, third and uh, fifth, and I want to add them together. So everyone knows how we do this. We put it over a common denominator. And in fact, uh, there's a little shortcut here. I can say 5 times 1 plus 3 times 1 over 5 times 3. 15 is 8 over 15. And the book says, oh, we're kind of going to learn how to do that backwards. 
That's what we're going to learn how to do. Problem is that these are numbers. But we're going to do this with polynomials. And this, there's something interesting here. I mean, well, let's say uh, I said, all right, well, this is some number a over 3 plus some other number b over 5. And I want to figure out what that is. So a good guess would be if I make a1 and b1, 3 plus 5 is 8, and I've got it. Okay. But I also could set a equal to 4. So that's 20. And then b equal to minus 4. It's not unique. It's not a unique answer. And, and, and unless you see there's some kind of pattern here, the next one is 7 and minus 9. I guess if you add 3 and you subtract 5, you'll keep getting solutions. So uh, I want to caution you that um, you know, polynomials actually are a lot like numbers. If I have some polynomial f of x and uh, e of x, I can add them, right? uh, just like numbers. I can multiply them. Um, I can do all sorts of things with these that uh, I can do with numbers, but there's something I can't do with polynomials, which is important here, actually. I can't always find an inverse of a polynomial. Or, let me rephrase that. The inverse of a polynomial is not a polynomial. Right? It's a rational expression. And uh, that, that actually that turns out to be the key difference between numbers and polynomials here. Otherwise, we have this problem that uh, when we try and do this reverse fraction thing, we get a whole bunch of answers. Okay. None of what I just said is part of the curriculum. You don't have to know any of that, right? Uh, I hope that makes you feel at ease. Um, all right, let's, let's start with a super simple example here. Um, we're going to look at, this is, this is something we've seen before. It's that simple, we don't even need this technique to figure it out. <coughs> So we're going to transform this. We only have one. The reason it's so simple is there's only one uh, expression here in the denominator, one uh, polynomial of degree 1. But in this particular case, what we want to do is we want to have 1 plus x over 1 plus x. And then what are we going to need? What are we going to do here? We're going to have to subtract one over one plus x. Right? And then this just simplifies. This is just one minus one over one plus x. And we all know how to find these antiderivatives. This is just x minus the log of absolute value of one plus x. It's a constant. Okay, that's a super, that's so simple it doesn't even tell us anything particularly new. But now we're gonna we're gonna take a look at kind of the next step up. This is this is where you wanna, wanna kind of pay attention. <coughs> this is a very basic practical technique here. Uh, we're gonna look at this example. Integral of 5x minus 4 over 
2x squared plus x minus 1 dx. And I, I want you to pay particular attention to one important fact about this, which is if I find the derivative of the, the, uh, the denominator, what do I get? I get 4x plus 1, which is not the numerator. Now, I hope at this point everyone knows that if this was the same as the numerator, and I've got a very basic pattern here. I have f prime of x over f of x, which of course is the log of f of x. But that's not going to work here. So instead, we have to take a different tact. Um, we first want to see if we can factor this. Right? So 2x and x and 1 and 1. <coughs> so this is plus, this is minus. A little mystery here, right? Is use foil. If things get hairy, go right ahead and use the quadratic formula. And just see what, what you get. Okay, so I have I factored my denominator. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can get this into the form 2x minus 1 plus x plus 1, something like this. In other words, I want to undo that sum that gave me this. OK, how am I going to go about doing that? Well, the next step is you just go ahead and add them, right, symbolically. And again, ax plus 1 plus b times 2x minus 1 all over 2x minus 1, x plus 1. And I know that has to end up equaling the same thing over here, but 5x minus 4. Well, here's where the fact that these are polynomials comes in really handy. Because I know that there's no way I can add a number and a number and get an x. The only way I can get an x is by adding x's. So I can say ax plus 2bx equals 5x or a plus 2b equals 5. And in the same way, uh, if I add the numbers, I should get you know, the number. So a plus negative b equals minus 3. So I'll write this over here, minus b equals 4. All right, so I told you this was algebra. And all of you know how to solve two equations and two unknowns, right? This is easy stuff, right? So what am I going to do here? I think I'll take this equation and subtract this equation. All right, so a minus a is nothing. 2b minus b is 3b. And 5 minus 4 is 1. Oh, but it's not 4. It's minus 4. So it's 9. So now I know that b equals 3. I can substitute it back into either of these. So a minus 3 equals minus 4, or a equals minus 1. That's the fun part. So I know that I can transform my integral into minus 1 over 2x minus 1 plus 
3 over x plus 1. And this is really easy, right? This is just minus the log of 2x minus 1 plus 3 times the log of x plus 1 plus a constant. Now, if you want to show me that you really know your laws of logs, you could write this as log of x plus 1 cubed over 2x minus 1 absolute value plus c. Not necessary, but you could do that. OK, everybody on board here? Questions about this? Okay. Let's look at one that's a little more difficult. Before I go on with this, uh, you notice that the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. Does everyone know what I mean when I say that? Does everyone know what the degree of a polynomial is? Yes. The degree of this polynomial is 3 because that's the exponent, the largest exponent on an x. The degree of this is 2. Now, if that wasn't the case, if the degree of this wasn't smaller than this, what can I do to fix that? I don't have to do it here, but what can I do to fix that? Anyone know? You've done this in this class. You can divide. You can divide polynomials, right? And if, if this were a larger exponent, once you divide, you'll have a polynomial and a remainder, or which is a rational fraction, for which this will have a, a, a lower, a smaller degree than this. OK, anyway. So we want to, uh, we want to factor this. Uh, there's a factor of x here, right? Here is minus x minus 2. And now I, I hope FOIL will here, right? X, X, 2, 1, plus 1, minus 2. Okay. So, again, I'm going to transform this into an integral of, and you don't have to use A, B, and C. B, B, and F doesn't really matter. X plus B over plus 1 plus c over x minus 2. All right, I've been ready to get their hands dirty. Right. So I have to multiply a times x1, x plus 1 times x minus 2, which was this thing, right? So a x squared minus a x minus 2a. You can just imagine the denominator down here, right? Plus b, I have to multiply times x times x minus 2. So bx squared minus 2bx. And c, I have to multiply by x times x plus 1. Plus cx squared plus cx. Okay, fun starts. So what are my three equations, the three unknowns that I pull out of this? Well, first I look at the x squareds. 
I see A plus B plus C equals 3. Right. I'm going to look at the x's. Negative A minus 2B plus C equals 7. And finally, minus 2a, oh, that's it, equals minus 2. <sighs> isn't, it, isn't it nice when life works out that way? I can see immediately that a is 1. Plugging in here, I can see b plus c equals 2. And plugging in here, I can see negative 2b plus c equals 8. So I'm going to take this equation and subtract this equation. I'm going to get negative 6 here. That goes to nothing. And I get 3b here. Now I know that b equals minus 2. And if b equals minus 2, c has to equal 1. OK? This board again to finish up. So the integral becomes a, which is 1 over x plus b, which is minus 2 over x plus 1 plus c, which is 4 over x minus 2. And then what do I end up with? Log of x minus 2 log of x plus 1 plus 4 log of this minus 2, which is a constant. And again, you can combine these using the wall logs if you wish. This is the method of partial fractions, integration by partial fractions. Now, um, I want to show you a trick here. stage of the game, when I, I know I have to set this equal to this, or rather, uh, let, me, let me rewrite this, a times x plus 1 times x minus 2, plus b times x times x minus 2, plus c times x times x minus 2. There is a trick you can use. Uh, you know, I was solving three equations and three unknowns. Some people don't like to do that. This has to equal 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. But this has to be true for all x, right? So I can just pick a convenient x. So let me, let me just set x equals 0. And what do I end up with? I end up with negative 2a equals 2. OK, that, we, already, we already did that. That was pretty easy. But I could also set x equal 2. All right, uh, this, this goes away, this goes away. I'll get, I'm sorry, nobody caught my error. Accuracy counts. Okay, now I plug in two, and I get uh, A goes away, B goes away, 6C equals 
and I plug in 2 here, and what do I get? Uh, 12 plus 14 plus 2 minus 28. Uh, I did something wrong. Uh, minus Think minus, minus. minus. There's a minus. I hear a minus. On the right side. Over here? Yeah. Oh, minus, minus 2. Yeah. Okay. 26, 24. Okay, so immediately I see C equals 4. And again, I could also plug in minus 1 and find out what uh, B is. Um, for those of you who want to go on math, Here's something to think about. This is all over x times x plus 1 times x minus 2, right? Well, I can't plug in 0 minus 1 or 2 here, right? But this works anyway. Why is it that it works? That's you know something to think about, but not for this class. Okay. Uh, we have a we have a dead horse to beat here. We're not quite done. There's two more things you have to know become masters at partial fractions. First thing you need to know is what to do when you have a repeated linear factor in the denominator. Example, x over x plus 2 squared, x minus 1. <coughs> now, you might think you can get away with saying, I want the integral of a, well, we're going to leave a sitting there for a second, b over x plus 2 plus c over x minus 1. And it will not work. What you need to do when there is a repeated linear factor is repeat it. In this case, we just need x plus 2 squared. If this were cubed, we would need three terms here. X plus 2 cubed, x plus 2 squared, x plus 2. But you do need this factor for this to work out. And of course, the math gets harder. But, you know, we're brave, so we have A times x plus 2. No. No, we don't need to. All we have to do is multiply. I mean, the denominator here is going to be what? x plus 2 squared times x minus 1. So we just have to multiply a times x plus x minus 1. b, on the other hand, we have to multiply by x plus 2 and x minus 1. And c, we have to multiply by x plus 2 squared. So let's try that. So we have ax minus a plus, okay, this is going to be x squared minus 2x, wait, wait, 2x minus 1x, it's just minus x minus 2. Did I get that wrong? And here I've got cx squared plus 4cx plus <coughs> equals 
x. Okay? So again, let's look at the x squareds. That's b plus c equals, how many x squareds do I have over there? Int, I have none. Okay, that's all right. Now let's look at the x terms. I have a minus b plus 4c, and that equals 1. Note also that here that c equals minus b, right? So if I plug in minus 4, I've already got a minus 5b equals 1. And then the last one is minus a minus 2b plus, did I forget to put a c here? Yes, plus 4, c equals how many, how many uh, of these guys do I have over here? Maybe I should write it this way, or here. Okay, this is zero. And again, since c is minus b, this becomes minus 4b. So minus a minus 6b equals zero, <coughs> or a equals 6b. So 6b minus 5b is 1, so b equals 1. <coughs> a equals one sixth and C equals minus B minus one. I mean the, the great part about this, it's it's a little complicated, but it's all you know from your first, second year of high school, maybe from eighth grade. I don't know. All right. Um, I said there were two more things you have to know. There is one more. Uh, take a deep breath and then we'll do this and then we'll go on a break. Right? <coughs> what? What we, haven't, what we haven't covered here are what are known as irreducible terms. Now, in some sense, there are no irreducible terms if we're using complex numbers. Right. I don't know if you remember the fundamental theorem of algebra. If I have some polynomial, polynomial x of degree n, how many roots does that have? n roots. n roots. Unfortunately, you might have to go to the complex numbers. And, and if you have those roots, you know, R1, R2, so forth, and we know that f of x equals x minus R1, x minus R2, x minus R2. But uh, as I said, not all polynomials are reducible in just the reals. So let's take a look at probably the simplest possible example. Okay. Uh, you might not get the problem in this nice form. You might, you might have to factor and find out that you have this ugly guy here, 1 plus x squared. His roots are i and minus i, but as I said, just dealing with real calculus here, so 
not going to help us any. So the question is, what does this transform to? Well, certainly we want, uh, no, I'm just going to put this over here, x minus 1, it's going to be a term. But to take care of this, it's not good enough to just have a simple letter up here. We have to have uh, part of it is uh, a coefficient on x plus just a plain number. And this will suffice for any degree to uh, term that you can't reduce. Okay, uh, let's go through it. So we have ax plus b times x minus 1 plus x squared plus 1 times c. And that's just going to equal 1. So now we have to do some multiplication here. So we have ax squared uh, minus ax plus bx minus b plus cx squared plus c equals minus 1. Okay, let's look at the x squareds. a plus c equals... Zero x squared plus zero x. You don't have to write that. This is zero. Then we have the x terms minus a plus b equals zero again. And finally, minus b plus c equals. That's not too bad. Um, okay, uh, let's add these two. So b plus c equals zero. And then let's add these two. I get two c equals one, or c equals one half. means a equals minus a half from this equation. I know b is equal to a, so b is equal to minus a half. All right, um, I'm going to rewrite it over here. Um, since I have all these halves, I think I'll just take them out. So I have minus x minus 1 over, take a negative 1 half out, that looks good, x squared plus 1. And so this is going to become minus 1 over x minus 1. too bad, except that the derivative of, of this is not this, right? So we can't use that nice form. But we can break this up, right? x over x squared plus 1 plus 1 over x squared plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1. Almost there. In partial fractions. Derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So if I make this a 2 and put a half out front, right? So now I have 1 half log of x squared plus 1. What's this? And 
tangent inverse of x minus log of x minus 1. When you get a term like this, you know, the, the irreducible part, you might have to work a little harder. I mean, we've looked at, we've seen some other techniques, you know, you complete the square on the bottom or you know, something like that. You might need to do something a little more adventurous. But, but this is your basic partial fractions. All right, why doesn't everybody take a break? Uh, try and be back in maybe five minutes or so. Um, and we'll <coughs> try a few of these before uh, okay, evening is over. Are you gonna tell you? No, I'm not gonna tell you. Okay. I'm gonna so, you guys can all figure this. I can figure it out. No, no, no. Which one are you gonna take? You can take whatever, whatever you take. I know you. Alright, I'm taking them honey. Well, this is a what? Who? I've got two. This, however, is not a linear term. No, you do have to do that. So, it's a good time. We're talking about the We've got a four. No, you. Okay. Instead of like solving the algorithm, you just let the calculator do everything for you. You can just look it up on my own. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 The question is why is this work? Why do that? Right? Just don't take some. If you take some, you die. I had a earlier today. I I I took some of man. I took some and I dropped it. This is the worst. Remember when I started talking about the testers, how you get tests, and 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 But, but that's the problem. I can't explain it. I can just simply say, here it is. So I can't explain it simply. That's the problem. Sure. But so how do I recognize what different cases are this? Well, okay. Just trying to figure out. Okay. So how do you know you have an irreducible term here? It can't. There's a square that can't be. Well, well. We can't, we can't break this up into, we can't factor it. But how would you actually be sure of it? The way you would be sure of it is you would use the quadratic formula on the set. And you get an imaginary value. So that tells you that as, as the root of this, it's irreducible. Right? That's the Yes. Well, I mean, that's not what well, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lower degree than this. Is that the most general? Yeah, 
And then you just have to find out what it be on. It could be anything. It could be zero. So it is. So no matter what this is. That was the best question I've had in since keeping it for you. It's just not one I can answer. It's a full no, we're not. We're just doing air. Yes. Good. Okay. But 
mine is. I kept it organized. <laughs> <laughs> So straightforward that I'm just going to ask someone who feels confident to tell me what A and B are. Five and 
negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 or negative 4. Well, let's see. This won't fit on my skinny little piece of paper here. Uh, 5x minus 5 plus negative 4x plus 8. That's x plus 3. We have a winner. Okay. Um, there's some homework. You'll get some practice with this. You'll get some more practice with the repeated, repeated linear factors and the irreducibles. And this will not be on the quiz, so do not uh, panic. Uh, I want to switch gears now. Um, we're going to cover another subject very briefly. And <coughs> I believe it's so straightforward as to not require very much attention. But all the same, I think it's, it's, rather, uh, it's rather practical. I mean, here we've been learning all these techniques because for hundreds of years, calculus students have learned these techniques. Um, I had this conversation with someone earlier today, and they pointed out that why is it we learn multiplication? I mean, we've got calculators, right? But it turns out if you don't know how to do multiplication yourself, you don't become a very good math student. So it seems ironic our technology has solved this difficult problem, but we, we still have to learn it. In the same way, we still have to learn how to do integration. Uh, however, I'm going to give you information now that you may question whether that was really true or not. <coughs> uh, so the first, uh, first technique I'm going to talk about is I think we mentioned this before, is using tables. And the example here is x squared of 2x minus 9. And uh, if you happen to have the book, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer you to table item number 88. Let's see. So uh, after this is this is not as this is harder than it looks. Okay, there we have eighty eight. And what do you know? Eighty eight kind of looks like our example here. says the integral of dx x, x square root 2a minus b minus b equals 2 over the square root of b Tangent inverse square root of ax minus b over what? Over b plus c. And they want you to know that b has to be greater than zero. Well, okay. <coughs> Really, A is 2, and B is 9. So this just becomes 2 over the square root of 9, which is 3, and the inverse square root of 2x minus 9 over 9 plus C. Not much effort involved there. 
Uh, I, I think I, I might have mentioned that uh, I have a book at home. It's kind of like this. It's got a set of ta integral tables in it. And there's at least 500. I think I've seen tables with 1,000 or 2,000. Some of them are just kind of refinements. But uh, you can spend a while looking through there. They are categorized, just like they are in the book here. Um, but that's one strategy. You know? um, maybe those of you who are, uh, are going to become physicists, or I don't know, maybe you use integrals in economics. Maybe you'll just get a good table of integrals, and you'll say, that's all I really need to do this. Uh, and, and, and that's not a, that's an old strategy. Tables of integrals have been around at least 100 years, maybe more. Uh, but there is a newer <laughs> strategy. Uh, Okay, so uh, this is one example of something you can find on the web. Uh, you don't have to, I'll write the URL here. This is integral-calculator.com. Another place you might go is, oh. well, this is a little more complicated. Wolfram Alpha Calculators. Wolfram is a uh, company that makes a product called Mathematica. If you're very interested in math, you might, might be interested in. <coughs> Oops, I can't spell. Oh, but it came up anyway? Yeah, Oh, I see. I, I bring it up here. Well, maybe I just can't spell. If you Google, you know, integration, you're going to find it. So uh, let's uh, let's use this integral calculator here and try our luck on the same integral, one over x. You know, I just guessed and I figured out how it wanted me to put in the square root of 2x minus 9. Okay, uh, can everybody see that? I know I don't know any way to zoom this. But I just typed in an expression. It says this will be calculated. And I say go. Oh, did I put a different constant? No. Oops. Now, how do I do that? Wait a minute. Let's see here. Uh, oh, 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 I see. Thank you. Probably need more parentheses here. There we go. Okay, better? Uh, oh, we want to go. Please wait. Calculating results. Okay, so here we have 2 thirds arctan square root of 2x minus 9 plus over 3 plus c. Just, just what I got from the tables. One difference about these automatic calculators is they are computer programs and they are 
relentless. You can put a very, very complex expression in, and if it can, there's some mechanical way to find the integral, they will do it. It's really quite amazing. Uh, so again, I, I, I want you to be aware of these products. Uh, again, you can just find it on the web. It'll do your work for you. Uh, I highly recommend you not use this for all your homework from now on, because then you won't know how to do problems when you come to the test of midterm or the final. But uh, this, is, this is a modern tool, which can be very helpful. Uh, this particular one here, they have a little note. I don't know if you can read it. It says, uh, Somewhere on here it says, we don't show you the steps, but in the future we will. So, no. Uh, right now it doesn't teach you anything about how to find this integral, but it may in the future. So, this makes you have to think. Oh, well, maybe that too, yes. This. Calculus comes into conflict with capitalism, yes. That's most definitely. Uh, so anyway, I, again, uh, I, I gave you a little homework to do. Uh, you can either use an automatic system, just, just so you have a feel for how it works, or uh, look things up in the tables. Uh, and uh, just be aware that uh, all this stuff we, we're, we're teaching you how to do, um, there. You still, need, you still need to know how to do it, but it's nice to know that, you know, you get out into the real world and you're faced with a problem like this, you can at least check your work or save some time. Um, okay, I, I'm really surprising myself. I thought I had more to say about this. Uh, I don't have any more for today. It's way too early, so. Um, I know there's a quiz tomorrow. I'll hang around if there are any 